Welcome to another scriptural study. We kindly suggest that you put your computer screen on full view and to stop the video at any time to review the scriptural and associated information in greater detail. In this scriptural study, we will be sharing scriptural, empirical, historical, etymological, and archaeological evidence that asks, is Baal Gad the Lord God of world religions? And as well, exploring if Satan is the Lord God of world religions. Please feel free to critique this scriptural study video by responding in the YouTube comments section and or to the links provided in this visual with scriptural feedback only, of course. We would like to thank many folks for their scriptural sharing over the years in this specific scriptural subject matter. And especially to C.J. Coster and as well Donald Adkins for their excellent efforts and research in this scriptural subject matter. To many people in different world religions, the question in this visual is blasphemous to even contemplate. They would never even consider the thought, much less study scripture daily like the noble Bereans, of whom it is written in the book of Acts. Scriptures share that the old serpent, called the devil and Satan, has deceived and led the whole world astray. How many of us then have truly chosen to read scriptures daily to actually realize just how deep that deception is within this world. This scriptural study video will reveal only some of the depths of that deception to those obviously who are able to receive it. Scripture explicitly tells us that salvation comes in only one exclusive name. All through Scripture, the Almighty Yahuwah and His name was to be forever and for all generations. Is it not evident then, according to the above quoted verse, let alone the multitudes laced throughout Scripture, that if Satan desires to keep us from being saved and or delivered, all he has to do then is to deceive each world religion and the people in them into changing the name which is above all names. Think, would anyone actually argue that world religions have not been known throughout the ages for creating chaos and confusion, and that they are extremely divided? But as shocking as it is to some, they all come together as one, fully united under an incorrect title for the Almighty. And to think the words Lord God are not even a name, but a title for something else entirely. But first, before we talk more about that, let's just do the math. Some to this day are still amazed at the ignorance of the Creator's professed people who cannot understand the simple fact that one is one and never two, three, four, five, etc. Now, surely, if there is only one name given, how can these professed believers say that it doesn't matter what name they call on? What is the reason and are reasons for ignoring simple math? Are they not deceived by that old serpent, Satan the devil, if they are calling on any other name other than the one exclusive name that was given by our Creator Himself? Surely you can see that the only answer to our question is, yes, they have most definitely been deceived. So, who or what is Baal? To find the answer to this question, a good place to begin is using the Strong's Hebrew Concordance. Now, if these words such as master and husband were the only uses of the word Baal, we really couldn't complain, could we? Why? Because even scripture reveals that the Almighty Yahuwah was a husband to Israel, as we can read in the book of Yeshayahu or Isaiah, chapter 54, verse 5, and Yermiyahu, or the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 32. This in Hebrew would be, quote, Yahuwah is Baal to Israel, 
end of quote. Thus, Baal is used in a proper way. But this is not the only usage of the word Baal, as we shall plainly see. Here we find another Baal, a terrible one, a false deity. Can we find out more about this false deity? Allow us to quote page 1212 in the explanatory notes of the Institute for Scriptural Research, Scriptures Translation. Baal. This word, it seems, gradually became a proper name. A similar Semitic word derives from the Aryan root Baal, which means to shine, according to some. According to W.H. Rosher's well-known lexicon of mythology, Baal, or Bel, or Belos, was the ancestral and national deity of the Semites, and says that Baal was the founder of Babel, or Babylon, according to secular history. He is identified with the mythological man-made deities of Zeus, Jupiter, Ammon, Asher, Aser, Kronos, and Bel Marduk. Morris Jastrow, Max Mueller, and W.H. Rosher all agree. Baal is the Babylonian sun deity. The Baals of the nations were sun deities. And Baal worship is nothing more than the age-old pagan world religious systems of sun worship that people have been deceived into following all through time. Yes, it is nothing more than a large pile of BS from world religions and financial faith systems that are aligned together as one on a large scale, which is quite revealing, isn't it? But the Almighty is very clear about his name, and his word reveals over and over again that he does not appreciate it when we call him or give praise to names and titles of false man-made mythological deities and or idols. So if you love the BS the world is throwing at you, then the rest of this presentation will definitely not be for you. Because... Even the prophets knew and presented the truth that Yahuwah is the only name in which we can be saved. The prophet Yeshayahu and his name reveals this good news. And the word shares over and over again that there is no Almighty One before and or after Yahuwah. The good news is there is none else, just Yahuwah. Yes, the math works as per scripture. There is only one, and there is none else. But if you still desire to be so inclined to follow the iFlock sheeple, obviously scriptural math is not something to be guarded and or respected. And as such, you will willingly climb aboard the Baal God, Lord God truck, because like the rest of the iFlock sheeple, your worldly logic is telling you, Hey, what's the worst that can happen? Are we not lovingly instructed to go from the presence of foolish men and the repetitive Baal Gad Lord God worship they promote in their foolish faith systems? Are we not to seek scriptural knowledge and ignore the foolishness? Because there are so many resources of knowledge that educate us that the name of our Heavenly Father is the key to understanding scriptural doctrine. The foolishness of men in their world religions has been exposed. Let's look again at Strong's number 1167 and 1168. Baal is proven by the historical record, by archaeological findings and etymological documentation that it is a Phoenician deity. The scripture recorded much about this Phoenician deity. Have you noticed that in each of the above quoted texts, reference is made to a place called Baal Gad? Just what and where was this place called Baal Gad? Let's again go to the Strong's Hebrew Dictionary for the answer. Okay, a place in Syria, but as well known as a Baal of Fortune. So who is this Baal God? known as the Baal of Fortune. 
If you have a King James Version translation, you will find for Gad, it says, quote, that troop, end of quote, which we can find in Strong's number 1409. In fact, many translations have center or side columns with references that inform the readers that Gad, that troop, is a false deity. This can also be discovered by looking at Strong's number 1408. But who is really being worshipped behind this false deity name of this ancient idol, Baal Gad? Notice under Strong's number 1167, one of the definitions of the word Baal into English is Lord. So how was this false deity named Baal and or Lord applied in language? Yes, you know, because we have all heard the term Beelzebub, haven't we? Yes, Beelzebub or Beelzebul is none other than Satan and or the devil. Don't take my word for it. Research any dictionary, lexicon, and or encyclopedia for yourself. This is not difficult. Do you remember when the Pharisees called Yehushua the Messiah Beelzebub in the book of Matthew chapter 10 verse 25 and claimed that he cast out the demons by the prince of demons? If you do remember, go to Strong's Greek number 954. Yes, Baal in English is Lord or Master, and that this Baal is none other than Satan himself. And scripture confirms in many places that there would be many false prophets who would prophesy falsehood of the name of the Father, attempting to make people forget the name which is above all names for Baal, none other than the Lord. But hallelujah, scripture indeed shares that this foolishness by men and its world religions will be corrected and that no one will call Yahuwah ever again as my Lord. So yes, the name of our Father in heaven is Yahuwah, which regrettably has been substituted in our translations of the scriptures with the non-scriptural title Lord, some 6,800 and 23 times. Even the substitute Jewish title, Adonai, literally means Lord and or Master. But even more amazing is the fact that coupled with Satan's title of Baal, which is Lord and Master, the word Gad, which is pronounced God, means fortune or that troop as well. And so we find it not surprising at all that God is a Babylonian deity of fortune. And with little or no effort, you will learn that the Masoretes valpointed the word Gad in Hebrew in Strong's number 1409 like this. Gad is pronounced G-A-W-D or God. And yes, God in Hebrew too. And the world and its world religions do indeed worship and trust a Babylonian idol, a god of fortune. As we can see, Baal Gad into English is Lord God, who is none other than Lord Satan or Master Satan. Are any of us then who are watching this scriptural study video going to be one of those that perish due to a lack of simple knowledge? And or worse yet, a person that actually will ignore this imperative information? There was even a scriptural figure who was also the son of Jacob, who was called Gad. But again, it is not surprising that there was another Gad. The astrologers of Babel called Jupiter or Zeus by the name Gad, pronounced God. Take a tour in the Vatican. The guides will be very open who this Gad, or God, actually is, with no shame and or remorse whatsoever. God was also well known among the Canaanites, where his name was often coupled with Baal, Baal God, which according to the Masoretic vow pointing in the book of Joshua is pronounced Baal God. Even the Webster's Dictionary reveals that the word God is common to Teutonic tongues. 
it was applied to all heathen deities. It is no wonder then that Satan was termed Beelzebub in Hebrew and Beelzebul in Greek. We have learnt that both mean Lord of the Flies. Oh, how ironic is it that Satan was pictured as a gadfly or as one who gads about. A look at the definition of these two words in the Webster's New World Dictionary is quite revealing. In the book of Job, or Eob, when Satan appeared before Yahuwah, he was asked, From where do you come? Satan's answer was, From diligently searching in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. So, Satan as Beelzebub, Lord of the Flies, does exactly what a gadfly and a gadabout does. He is a restless seeker after fun. He is diligently searching in the earth, and from walking up and down, deceives with a terrible bite, and is extremely annoying, just like a gadfly. He gads about looking for souls to devour through deception which causes misery and suffering upon humanity. It's no wonder James Strong and his research team revealed that Beelzebul was a name for Satan and was the chief of evil spirits. And even more revealing is when we compare the meanings here with the book of Yeshayahu or Isaiah chapter 65 verse 11 where Gad slash God has been translated as that troop. These definitions would cause the meaning of this word to fall in the category of Gad in the sense of gathering, which is why the translators rendered Gad as that troop. It is also interesting to note that Gad, utilized as a verb, can be associated to a troop who gather without a specific aim and or purpose. And as shared previously... Gad corresponds with the meaning of a Babylonian deity of fortune, which was Yahuwah's intended purpose for using the word. So this troop and our group of persons loosely walks around without a name. While Gad, as we can see, ties it all together in the sense of a euphemism for God. So Satan is indeed the Lord God of this world the Lord of the Flies, and he has effectively deceived the whole world with his little childish word and name games in order to steer and or direct everyone away from the one true almighty Yahuwah. Is it just coincidence, then, that in the book of Enoch, originally known as Hanok, it revealed that Godriel, a fallen messenger, was one who led Hawa, or Eve, astray? And as well, show the children of men all the smitings of death, let alone all the weapons of death. We no longer consider it any type of coincidence that world religions who promote Lord God worship always ensure that scripture is ignored, especially when it comes to this subject matter. World religions also ensure that basic math principles are ignored as they usurp and keep hidden that the scriptures actually reveal that there is only one name under the heaven in which we can be delivered. We no longer consider it any type of coincidence that world religions and their behavior in promoting the Lord God and its worship, they always ensure that concordances, encyclopedias, dictionaries, and their lexicons are to be ignored, let alone any basic linguistic and or etymological principles which can be applied to seek and secure scriptural truth are recommended by them in any shape, form, or manner. And it's no coincidence that world religions who promote Lord God worship always ensure that even the archaeological evidence is to be ignored. And it is blatantly obvious and no coincidence that world religions ignore the massive amount of scriptural verses that share the name which is above all names, even including non-canonical documentation and as well historical records that do the same. And as such, why we all can have an extreme confident expectation to come out of this foolishness of world religions. But hallelujah! 
Scripture indeed warned us well in advance that nations would change its mighty ones, which are not mighty ones, and even change the esteem of the Almighty Yahuwah and reveal how it was actually done. Yes, by simply replacing and or usurping the name which is above all names with a Babylonian deity who has become the Lord of the world just as the Prince of Darkness wants it. But the word is clear. Yahuwah does not share his esteem nor his praise with man-made idols. Because, as Yahuwah stated from the beginning, his name was for all generations forever. And why, Scripture verifies continually there is only one name under the heaven given among men by which we need to be saved. Remember, it's just simple math. Yahuwah, the one who is self-existent, has one name. But foolish men in foolish world religions will have you thinking otherwise. Don't believe me? Test and prove all things yourself. Share the evidence as provided with the information in this video. And watch people in world religions immediately go ballistic and observe how they automatically, like a computer program, despise the name. Past historical records highlight this unacceptable behavior. And so does the scriptural record, as we can see from the book of Yeshayahu's writings. And worse yet, observe the efforts of world religions and just how vehemently they attempt to get people to forget the name which is above all names and replace it with Baal, which you now know is the Lord. The Messiah, Yahushua, faced the same challenges in his first coming, as we can easily read. The apostles faced the same challenges with the world religions of their day just as you will if you engage in this most noble scriptural privilege. And if someone from a world religion still wants to support the Prince of Darkness and the deception Satan has caused with Lord God worship, just ask them to read what happens to folks in world religions that willingly and consciously hide and or usurp Yahuwah and his name. It is vividly recorded in 1 Kings chapter 18. The way of Yahuwah is not for the foolish. Today is a new day and a wonderful opportunity to stop profaning the set-apart name. So let us all announce his name in the midst of all gatherings and thus help to stop world religions in their tracks with the blind leading the blind into a ditch because we are all in the midst of a revolution in which Yahuwah is now in process of increasing knowledge about his name which is above all names. As per his word he will cut off the names of the idols out of the land and they shall be remembered no more. This scriptural video study is intended for us all to get a head start in this wonderful and noble scriptural good news message. We continue to pray in the name which is above all names, that these scriptural video studies provide value to you and your loved ones. Until next time, Yahuwah willing, all the best in the name which is above all names.